So before the common core, here's an example of a fairly straightforward math problem. And a student might be expected to do it. They still might be expected to do something like this, but it would be practice. It wouldn't be um, the top of what they're expected to do. So students asked to round each number to the nearest tenth. So they have to understand place value, they have to understand decimals, and they have to understand how to estimate or how to round. Um, pretty straightforward. They could do each problem. They could practice this over and over. And you could say that a student has mastered how to round numbers to the nearest tenth. But we're going to go a little bit deeper with the common core. Here's an example of a similar problem using the same numbers. Um, but as we go through it, you'll see that students' thinking needs to be much deeper. They need to display a much greater understanding of how decimals work and how rounding works. And to be not, not only to be able to write out a correct answer, but to explain it in words. So we have the same numbers. This is a swimming race. Um, it has their times. And it, but instead of just asking about rounding them to the nearest tenth, which they could do, the question asks the student to explain how the results of the race would change if the race used a clock that rounded to the nearest tenth. So multiple steps here. Students have to understand what's the greatest, what's the least, and how to order all these numbers as they see them right now with the hundreds place there. But then they also need to understand how to round them and then how to compare those two sets of numbers. So what's different with the numbers as you see them now versus what would what the numbers would be if you were to round them to the nearest tenth? And can you explain that and how different it would be? Another example um, for math. Again, fairly straightforward. Again, something that students might be might see on a quiz, might see on a homework, um, but again, not the very top level what's expected with the common core standards. So students ask to find the equivalent fraction to four thirds. They have to understand fractions, numerators, denominators, uh, understand mixed numbers and improper fractions and what all those things mean and what examples of them are. Um, and then how to convert an a improper fraction like we see here, four thirds, into a mixed number and find the answer, which is one and one third, letter D. So again, lots of stuff they still, they still have to know and be able to demonstrate to do all in this fairly simple problem. But again, with the common core, as you'll see in a moment, we're going to go even deeper. First of all, you see this is an example that can come straight out of real life. It could come out of a, a, a child helping his or her parent, you know, baking or cooking for dinner. Something that they could really apply in a future job and in college. Question fairly sim or, um, similar to the one before it. The recipe requires a one and one third cups of sugar. Which of the following ways describes how the measuring cups can be used to measure the sugar accurately? So again, they have to know mixed numbers. Um, they have to know fractions. They have to know measurement a little bit. Um, but they're going to apply it to a real life problem where they're trying to use the tools that they have available so these three measuring cups you see here, to get to that amount of sugar that fits the recipe, the one and one third cup. <clears throat> so as a student th thinks through this or actually practices and practices it in real life, um, they're gonna have to first decide, okay, I need to get to one whole cup of sugar before I can get to one and one third cup. So how do I get to one whole cup? Uh, I could fill up the half a cup two times, I can fill up the third cup three times, the fourth cup four times, like that. Okay, I can see an answer that's similar to that, use the half cup twice, okay? And then how do I get my third cup? I can fill up my third cup once. So again, similar knowledge and skills apply here, but it's put into a real life context. They have to go a little bit deeper and they have to think about the types of tools um, and the different scenarios that they'd actually use to find their answers. Now an example of, of a student task from um, English language arts or literacy. Now, obviously this question would, would go along with an entire uh, story, 
which I didn't, I don't want to put on the slide, but um, these are questions that students see probably every day um, from first or second grade all the way up through high school. Um, and even in college, what's the main idea of the story? So we're not looking for the details here. We're, we're looking for the gist of the story. Or what's the main argument or idea that really stands out? The answer here, without reading it all, um, that a student could identify after reading the story, would be B, Jonathan is an experienced treehouse builder. Um, all the details aren't, aren't important, but I, wanna, I wanted to show you this example before we get to what it would look, how it would look differently um, with the Common Core standards and assessments. So now with the Common Core, again, we're going deeper. Uh, we're using the same text. We're using the same ideas, the main ideas, and supporting details. But we're asking the student to do a little bit more, not just tell us the main idea. Okay? They have some, they have multiple choices like they did before. But they're asked this time, choose the two correct main ideas, so two things that could be the main idea. And if they were doing, they're going to be doing this on a computer, for example, they could drag their choices over to the boxes on the right, labeled main ideas. Then they also need to choose a detail that supports each main idea. It has to be the one, has to be the detail that supports that exact main idea. The same thing for the second main idea. So again, it's asking a little bit more. It's the same types of skills going a little bit deeper, asking them to explain their or reason out their answers for main idea a little bit more by, by presenting uh, the supporting detail that goes along with each one. So you saw a few examples. You saw examples of the shifts that students are experiencing in their classrooms and that teachers are experiencing as they, as they adapt to these new higher standards. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what can you as parents do and what others are doing to support students who are English language learners. Again, we don't, we don't hear people in the news who talk about Common Core talk specifically about English language learners or students who's, whose first language is not English. We don't hear people in the government who are debating um, whether Common Core is a good or bad thing. They don't talk specifically about English language learners. They don't talk, like one of our other questions earlier was about students with special, special needs, students with special education classes, for example. They don't talk specifically about those groups of students. But as I'm sure you would agree, those students, English language learners, students with special education, other special groups of students need to be at the forefront of people's minds who are making these decisions to implement these higher standards um, to be shared by all. So one somewhat simple thing you can do is to simply raise your voice. So share what you learned today and what you learned from other resources, what the facts are about the Common Core. There's a lot of misinformation out of there. Um, there's a lot of hyperbole. There's a lot of exaggeration as to what the Common Core standards are and what they do, and what they're trying to teach our kids. Um, I tried to present just the facts and where they came from and what they are and what they do and how they're different. So share that with friends, with family, uh, with policy makers, with, with um, school boards, with principals, with teachers. Okay, ask questions, raise your voice. Um, similarly, advocate. Okay. Talk to those who are educating your children. Talk to the school boards and the lawmakers who are making decisions on whether or not to use Common Core in your children's classrooms. Tell them to think about English language learners specifically when making those decisions. We want to hold all students, including those whose first language is not English, to high standards so that they are ready for college, so that they are ready for great career opportunities and high paying careers after college. Practice, practice, practice. This goes for students and for parents. Read and discuss with your child every day okay, what they learn, what you've seen, what you've learned, what you've heard, something you've read. Paying close attention to those non-fiction examples, so something in the news 
that you want to discuss. Back it up with evidence. Have a conversation. Have a have a, a debate um, with your children about an issue. And then ask your child's teachers for other ideas. Okay, teachers are being educated and have great have had input into the Common Core and are learning more about how to best be flexible with them so each child meets that expectation. So ask the teachers, what can I do at home? Okay, what else can my child do at home and at school um, to help prepare them to meet these higher standards? Push for biliteracy. Push for students learning and truly understanding and being able to read, write, um, debate, understand complex um, text in two or more languages. Um, it has incredible benefits, as I'm sure many of you probably know, um, for students when they go to college and when they're looking for careers to be able to do all those things in more than one language. Some of the key resources for parents and families. Um, these are just a few of the many, many resources that are out there and available online for you to seek out. Um, Coloring Colorado, Colorado um, is a great website, has tons of resources. Um, it's in English and in Spanish. Um, great resources for parents. So some of the ideas that I shared with you tonight, some of the examples came from them. Um, they have many, many more. So reach out to them, visit their website, um, connect them with your, your child's teachers um, for other ideas. Um, Stand for Children has recently started Stand Up, which, is, which is, stands for Stand University for Parents, where they're really engaging parents to be those advocates for all students, um, to advocate for higher standards with lawmakers, with school systems. Um, so look into STAND if you're interested in, in doing more around advocacy and just, and just learning more information in general. They also have some great videos um, that explain very simply what the Common Core Standards are, how they're different, um, and, and why they're important. Um, and then a couple other, uh, TESOL, Californians Together, and Engage New York, again, also, also have great resources for educators and also for parents and students. Uh, about the Common Core state standards. I'm going to stop there. And if anyone has any questions that they would like to enter into the question box, uh, please do so. Um, I got to apologize for some of the technical difficulties we had during the presentation, but I hope that you got what you came to get out of this presentation. I hope you have a better understanding of what the Common Core standards are, um, where they came from, how they're different, um, and what they actually mean for your children and what they're experiencing in their classrooms every day. Um, I know I, our organization, Education First, and me personally, I, I believe that the Common Core standards are the right way to go. Um, the states who, are, who have adopted them and are implementing them with fidelity are really on the right track to get all students truly prepared to go to college without needing remediation, um, to succeed in college, to graduate from college with a degree, 